So now that we got that ready, we can move on to some more interesting things. So we're going to place the case somewhere like that, I suppose. And we're going to get started with uh, some things that are a little more fun. So the motherboard here, this 990 FX, FXA UD3 comes with a bunch of shit. We don't need any of that shit. There's a sticker. Look at that. Whatever, man. Uh, multiple stickers. Wow. Excellent. Some uh, nice SATA cables. Ooh, an SLI bridge. That's pretty cool. And uh, this is a rear I.O. shield. This is a... Uh, well, we'll get to that. How about that? So, the motherboard itself is going to be packed in this anti-static bag thing stuff. And you're just going to pull it out and you want to place it on some kind of non-conductive surface uh, once you've taken it out of the anti-static bag. And uh, generally, people just like to put them on, on top of the motherboard box. It's the perfect size, it's non-conductive, you know, it's all good man, it's all good. So. You're going to take it out of the anti-static bag. Of course, uh, remember to ground yourself first. I mean, I just did, so it's no problem. Throw the fucking bag away, because you won't need that. Wow, that's a good-looking motherboard, man. Good-looking motherboard. So, we're going to mount the CPU into the motherboard. This is the FX8320E. And uh, we should unpack that as well. If I we can figure out how to do it. Right. This is why you need a knife, people. Cut things open. All right, so. The stuck cooler, oh, there's a little piece of paper. Won't need all of that shit, fuck the fucking paper, man. The stock cooler here, it's a piece of shit, man. Don't use it, fucking throw it away. There's a thermal compound on it already, but we won't be using any of that, so I'll just put this in here and throw it out of the wind. I'm not gonna do that. So, there's a, another fucking sticker if you want those. I don't really care. And here's the CPU itself packed inside this protective thing stuff and stuff. Remember, CPUs are pretty fragile. You don't want to bend the pins. You don't want to touch the pins. You want to grab it from underneath like this and just, you know, only touch the die and on the sides of the CPU. Because if you bend the pin, that could that could kill the whole thing. You don't want to do that. <laughs> now, when, uh, when looking at the CPU socket in the motherboard here, what you're going to look for, just come over here, is that, well first there's this retention arm, you have to release that in order to get it into the CPU socket. Specifically though, you want to look for a little triangle like this one, which is going to match up with the triangle on the CPU. And you're going to line those up, and the CPU should slip right in. You don't want to push it in or press it in in any way. Uh, applying any force uh, at this point is a bad idea, and you're probably just going to bend the pins. Once it's in, give it a little wiggle just to make sure it's, it's all good and then you can lower the retention arm like that and the CPU is installed. Beautiful. Okay, so the next thing we need to do, which is probably going to be the hardest thing in this video, is to install the CPU cooler. You should probably install the RAM first if you have a large CPU cooler like me. Otherwise, it's going to be really hard to do that later on, if not impossible. So let's do that first. Uh, so when it comes to the RAM, if you take a look at the motherboard here, you'll find that there are four RAM slots. And two of them are black and two of them are gray. And uh, typically they're color labeled this way because uh, if you insert one into a gray slot and one into a black slot, for instance, they won't be operating in dual channel mode. And you want that for optimum speed and so on and so forth. So you should place them into two slots of the same color. And typically the ones uh, that are counted as, as uh, the first set of slots or whatever are the ones closest to the CPU. So we're going to put these into the... Uh, the black slots here in the RAM. More stickers? Really? When you look at a piece of a piece of RAM, a stick of RAM like this, there's a little notch. And uh, this notch is never going to be in the middle or anything like that. It's always going to be off to one side so that you can't put it in the wrong way. So if you come up here and we take a good look at the RAM slots, uh, you want to open the tabs here with the ones that you're going to put the RAM into. And you want to line up the notch, see, like that. Then you just kind of slide the piece, uh, stick a ram in there and apply equal pressure on both sides just until those two notches lock into place. We're going to do the exact same thing for the other stick of ram. So, you know, line up the notch and everything. 
and equal pressure. You find motherboards sometimes that only have a tab on one side. Uh, with those, it's pretty much the same thing. Really, you just only have to open one of those tabs. Anyway, now that the RAM is in, we can focus on the CPU cooler. And uh, there was indeed a backplate inside the box. And there's a backplate on here already that we don't want. So you want to freaking uninstall the backplate that's on there already. If I could find the screwdriver. Do you know where the screwdriver is at? I probably put it on the floor somewhere and forgot about it because I'm an idiot. But oh, I was absolutely right. Okay, excellent. <laughs> so, I'm going to unscrew these screws around the socket. You can just kind of look at the back of the motherboard, find out um, which ones it, you know you need to unscrew. It's pretty simple, really. Uh, and uh, for your first PC build, you probably won't have to deal with anything like this because you're probably just going to use the stock cooler, yeah. And even if you're not, you probably won't be using a backplate for the one that you use for your first build. Because uh, there's no reason to buy a cooler like this for your first build. That's just ludicrous. Don't do it. <laughs> probably about time that I start using this. So, uh, take the screws, put them into some empty space like that just so we don't lose them. Same goes for those uh, plastic things. There you go. Get those in there. Just so we don't lose them. You never know. You might actually need them at some point. So don't throw shit away. And boom, look at that. The back plate is now out of the motherboard. I'm going to set that aside. And then we're going to uh, take the back plate that comes with the, the Dark Rock Pro 3 thing cooler stuff. And it's uh, symmetrical, so we just put it on in uh, some, some way, I suppose. And line up the holes. Yeah, that, that looks pretty good. And uh, wow, there are a lot of screws here. Whoa. Yeah, okay, uh, so how about this? I read the manual and then I'll be right back. Okay, so we got some screws here, a lot of different screws. We're gonna use, first of all, the long screws. They, they refer to these as the long screws in the manual. They're just called long screws for some reason, I don't know. Right, so it's pretty simple, right? You put the screws through the, through the holes, you know what I'm saying? Weird system, doesn't matter. That didn't work, obviously, so yeah. I want to uh, place the mobile like this. Yeah, like that. Beautiful. Beautiful. And then, no, that's not right. They need to go further through, because otherwise we can't attach these things. Whatever the fuck these are. They're supposed to help me install the cooler somehow. Can I? Oh, that's how it works. You just push them through like that. It's simple. It's fucking simple. It's just me. It's just me. We can put the back plate down, place the motherboard on top, align the screws, if I could see them. It, you're supposed to snap these on, but it's, it's some kind of guide system or something, I don't know, like that. Yeah, I guess they hold the screws in place or something, I don't know, we're gonna find out. Alright, so these things are on, and uh, then what we need to do is get the mounting hardware, specifically the AMD mounting hardware, which is uh, these tabs here. What we do with them is that we take one, they go on like like this or something. Is that, is that right? I don't know if that's right. Is it? How does this thing work? <coughs> Fuck it. That's what building a computer is all about. You know, about screws, bro. You know, if this thing wasn't so fucking huge, I didn't have to pull it off now, but how do you even use screws? Is there a place where you can learn how to use screws? Right, we need more screws. Put a screw through. If you don't lose it first, that is. Excellent! Now that that's done, we can do everything I just did before that I had to undo because I was an idiot. When we uh, take a look at this cooler, the idea is that it's going to pull air in from here and exhaust it out through here. And the exhaust fan inside of the CPU case. If you take a look here. Oh, shit. There's uh, an exhaust fan here. I'm actually going to unscrew this fan and put it in the front, but we're gonna do that later. There is gonna be an exhaust fan there, and this cooler right here is going to sit on the motherboard like this. Uh, excuse me, like this, so that it exhausts air into that fan to be brought out of the computer case. Before we do that, we need to apply thermal compound, or thermal paste or whatever. Shit, the cooler came with some thermal paste, but fuck that, we won't need to use it. I don't want it inside the computer. I was trying to throw it away. Jesus. I'm going to use uh, Arctic MX2 because I had some lying around and it's good. 
Now the thing about thermal paste is, when you apply it to the CPU, there is one rule of thumb that you always have to follow. Less is more. You don't want a lot on here. It does depend on the size of your CPU, but for this CPU, something like that is good. No more. No more than that. I mean, that's plenty, plenty. Some say like uh, um, the size of an un uncooked grain of rice, and for really big CPUs, like the size of a cooked grain of rice or some shit, I just go by eye and like, th that's good. I do like this and then flip it over like this and align it with the screws so that I can actually screw it in. Something like that. Hold on to that motherboard real good now. And I'm just gonna, first I'm gonna get the screws. You can come over on the other side here. I got the screws to uh, catch the threading here so that the motherboard doesn't fall off. And now one very important thing when you start screwing these screws in is that you do it in a cross pattern. Whoa. <laughs> Yeah, you do it in a cross pattern, because if you apply all the pressure on one side, and then all the pressure on the other side, you can imagine that the thermal compound is basically going to be squashed out to one side. Uh, and you want it to be as evenly applied as possible, So, you, which is why you're going to do this cross pattern thing. Uh, so you're just going to keep going from, you know, diagonally uh, from one screw to the other, until the whole thing is tightened up. And you don't want to tighten it, like, ultra much, just, uh firm you know they need to be firm yeah I think it was a good idea that we put the RAM in first as you can clearly see there wouldn't be a lot of space afterwards so uh, I'd like to give a shout out to my brother right there behind the camera because uh, we cut and then he was like you should probably put the RAM in first and I was like yeah it's a, it's a good idea once the CPU cooler is on there we're actually pretty much done with the motherboard for now uh, which is why we're gonna move on to some other things